Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike the Baldadonis. And today is Wednesday, which you all know is hanging out with Dr. Pete. Every other Wednesday, I get to hang out with my main man, Dr. Peter Prococo. And today, we're in his backyard, this beautiful, newly built deck. So thank you for letting me hang out today. Yeah, man. So today's topic is about the power of belief. And what do you think about that? Roll it. Let's roll it. So, Dr. Peter, what are we going to talk about today? Belief. 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 Super important. Uh, Mike and I have been sitting around for a couple hours today. Had some lunch talking about how our lives have changed over time. And, you know, one thing that I've learned, I think we've both been blessed with this, is what we believe is what we become. And uh, I think it's really important for our audience to understand just how powerful beliefs actually are. You know, this thing like called self-talk, the way you talk to yourself is really the what you think about yourself. Oh, I'm so fat. I'm so tired. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. That negative self-talk is basically your beliefs coming out. What's that do for you? It brings you down. It brings you down big time. It does. You know, I mean, I look at what you've achieved in the very short time that we've been working together and that motorcycle I'm going to choke that guy in a second <laughs> if he keeps turning it up uh, but you know realistically you went from not having any understanding of technology or motorcycles in the background that's unbelievable and they may not even hear it you guys may not even hear it today because I'm using lapel mics that have filters on them but who knows but that's what you do when you're doing a backyard video but yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, think about it. The stuff that you've been able to do is that you finally, not finally, but in this new world, you've learned how to believe in yourself and that anything's possible. Give us a couple minutes on your own transformation to start with. Uh, you know, um, geez, that's a tough one because I've gone through so many things in my life. Um, but recently, just the past three years, just meeting you alone with my vertigo, and you being a positive influence on me, you know, I was able to read certain things, to watch certain things, like a TED Talk, to learn about my illness and how everybody else has issues just like me. Um, and then we, you know, you, you told me I have such a great, interesting story and I should share it. Hmm. So six months ago, not even, maybe five months ago, I started sharing my experiences and you got me onto YouTube. Now, that is very interesting only because I'm anti-social with the media. I don't have Facebook or anything like that, but it feels so good to tell my story. And when I talk to other people with their issues and they tell me their story, you know, it makes them feel a little bit better so they can share. So that's a lot to do with my YouTube channel. So yes, believing and I step from nothing to now I'm in YouTube and millions of people at any time can watch a video. I think that's, that's very powerful. Yeah. Silson, out of his own mouth and his words, you know, it, it's cool to watch the changes that he's made. But more importantly, from the cheap seat sitting over here, he now has a belief that he can do it. And that even though there are some limitations that we're all suffering from that kind of hold us back at times, you gotta learn to get over them. And the only way to get over them is to believe that you can. You're only gonna do what you believe. If you believe that going outside is gonna give you allergies, you're gonna spend most of the day inside. If you believe that you can kill it, crush it, and make millions of dollars, then you're gonna do it. If you believe that you can't lose weight because you have a pituitary issue, which isn't real, as long as it's real to you and you believe it, you're gonna be in trouble. I wanted to share something with our audience today that goes into the world of science, being the doctor, that <clears throat> there was a study done by Harvard Medical and they took 8,000 people and they followed them over a 30 year period. And what they did, oh, pardon me, backwards, 30,000 people over an eight year period. And they simply asked them a couple of questions. How much stress have you had in the past year? And do you believe that stress is killing you or do you believe that stress is not a killer? And that's it. So they checked off what they, you know, what they believed and they collected the data and then these people went off and lived their lives. What they did do though is the researchers checked the public death records 
to see who had died potentially in that eight-year period. Well, get this, 46% of the people died in an eight-year period. But all of the people that died believed that stress was killing them. What? Right. They all believed that stress was killing them. And it's really interesting. They're like, seriously, Doc, is that true? Oh, it's true. You can look it up. I actually have the article. If you uh, are looking for it and you ask Mike in the comments below, I'll, I'll make sure I post it. You can read it. But it's very, very powerful. And here's the interesting thing, that when you're stressed and what you believe, how does that even work? When you're stressed, if you believe that stress is killing you, then you release a hormone from the brain, or derived from the brain, which comes from your adrenal glands, called cortisol. And cortisol, when you're under stress, causes the blood vessels around your heart to constrict. That can cause a heart attack. Not to interrupt you, but I called Dr. Pete over the weekend because I had a video of mine kind of explode in as for views and a lot of opinions came with that um, video. So I did get stressed out because this is all new to me. I text him, calls me up, says, relax, dude, relax. <laughs> Calm down. Talked to him for two seconds. My level went from here to here. And then after that, right back to normal. You know, stress is definitely, you know. You, well, you know what, I, I gotta tell you, and I'm, he just did me the best favor by helping me to preempt me into the next piece of this talk because you have an antidote that's with inside of you that the moment you feel high stress, there's a way to stop that and your brain produces another chemical. It's a very small concentration. It's called oxytocin. So at the moment when you're under big stress, like perhaps Mike was over the weekend where he started to internalize some of the negative comments that might come with social media, which you all know are they're just the way they are. When that happens, you release a, a river of stress hormones and cortisol into the blood. But at the same time, you begin to release a chemical called oxytocin from the brain. Now, oxytocin is an awesome, awesome chemical. The first thing that it does, and he did it perfectly, was it drives you for social interaction and engagement with someone else. So if you're stressing and a little frigged up, as we say, and you're struggling, reach out to somebody and do one of two things. Tell them what's going on, help them to understand what you're going through so they can support you. And if you're not comfortable with that, then just seek other people out that need help and help them. Because when two people begin to help and care for each other, that's when the oxytocin chemical starts to increase its concentration. And the more it increases and the higher it increases, Ox uh, oxytocin will rush to the heart of that individual, especially when they're under high stress because they're taking advantage of what I just told you. And this cortisol repairs any damage to the heart, whether it's microscopic or even macroscopic damage. Your heart is being repaired by the oxytocin. And here's the kicker, that oxytocin dilates the blood vessels around the heart so that even when you're under high stress, the vessels dilate. And these people knew who survived and thrived throughout this this uh, eight year study, they realized that the more time that they told themselves, or the, the more meaning that, listen, don't let this stress me out, or you're not gonna die from this, and stress is a normal thing. Under stress, you should sweat, feel anxious, have an upset stomach, tight muscles, can't sleep, my bowels are off. It's okay, this is all part of the natural mechanism of stress. But if you believe that, that it's killing you, then the potential to do that is 46% based on the study that we saw. So when you're stressed out, it's what kind of belief you have. Stress is not going to kill you. It's the belief that's going to kill you. So if the belief that you can survive and thrive and rock and roll releases chemicals into the bloodstream, which makes you feel incredible, well then get on it. Quit telling yourself that you're not this and you're not that, you're not capable of these things. You are capable of things, you're capable of anything. People who have created, the, the men and women who put men on the moon, they believed that they could get those little son of a guns there and that they believed that they could get them back and they did it. And if you remember the movie Apollo 13, when they went up and something happened with the, with the module and they were losing oxygen, they had no right to get back. But these men said, we will make it happen. We will find a way to make it happen because we believe that, that's what NASA is. And when you conduct your life this way with the belief that I am all that in a bag of chips, no matter what anyone else says, I don't care what anyone else says. And by the way, what people think of you, Mike, it's none of your damn business. That's what you told me. I was, like, what? I told I was like, what? That's what I told him the other night. I said, hey, listen, calm down, dude. What people think of you is none of your damn business. That's their issue, unfortunately. If you've got full control and feel good about who you are in life, you're not going to go around 
bitching right. at people and bastardizing them. Right, right. As a matter of fact, you'll know when you're in the right company of the right person because they want to build you up. They don't want to tear you down. And by the way, if you exceed their expectations and your own expectations during that, and you ascend beyond your own master, that's the best there is. But if your master is truly not your master, he will downplay everything that you've created and then make you feel like you're second fiddle to him. And that doesn't work. Believe that you're the man. Believe that you can make it happen. And where do you see what happens? You'll just walk with a better swagger and right, you'll make right. videos. Yep, and I'm doing that. And uh, today, uh, I told you guys before that I'm horrible with editing. Editing. Mm -hmm. What'd it take us, 10 minutes? If that, yeah. 10 minutes. I brought my computer in, my self of disbelief, of not knowing how to edit, taught me in five minutes. The computers are just all new to me. So with my self doubt, right? he was like, he doesn't even know my computer. He's like, ah, boom, 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 boom. done. There you go. Try this, try that. Yeah. But you know, you don't come from a world of higher technology I to begin not. with. No. But that doesn't mean you can't become the most tech savvy guy ever. No, now tonight when I do a video or tomorrow, I'll be able to put my music in there and I'll, whatever it is that you showed me today, yeah. understand, grow and keep growing. That's it. You're gonna see Mike over the next couple of years, just drive this thing right out of the park because yeah. he wants to and he believes that he can make it happen. Right. And not for nothing, sometimes having a good mentor, if he's called me that, we've spent some time together, just calming people, calming them down. At the same time, he told me today that he's been calming other people down in his own life, and it's just kind of working where one great moment is affecting the next great moment for somebody else. And by the way, listen, we need each other. That's all there is to it. Every dime that's in your pocket was in someone else's pocket first. We need each other. We need to communicate and stay well together. Bitching and pissing and moaning at people is ridiculous. Believe that you're amazing and that you're compassionate and that you're full of potential and believe that of someone else. Because it was Johann von Goethe, who was the great German philosopher, who said that if you see a man the way he is, then he'll stay that way or get worse. But if you see a man for what he could become, then you'll watch him soar and he'll become that. You do that with people around you and you'll see your life improve because your whole social network is now filled with more or less winners who want to achieve and help each other out. And if the individual in your world doesn't fulfill that, you either gotta jettison them and get rid of them or you need to have a good talk with them and say, what's the deal? Are you in or are you out? Because I can't hang out with you for too long if you're gonna keep dragging me down. Right, absolutely. And there you go and yep. you're rock and roll. And I did that. You know what, a lot of people I pushed to the side, even uh, just regular friends that, you know, they're just stuck in their life, yeah. stuck in that zone that they're miserable. You know, I talk to them about doing certain things. Yeah, 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 never do it. You know what? I give you my, my five minutes. I give you my 10 minutes. I give you my hour time. Every time I see you, you're not growing. You're slowing me down. So I want to keep growing. And for the people that do want to, um, listen to what I have to say and what you have to say. You know, yeah, the, the you get right something from it. Yeah. But you know, one of the reasons that a lot of people don't do this, people aren't just dumb, lazy, and stupid. They're fearful. They're afraid to step out because they don't want to be laughed at, they don't want to be ridiculed, and they don't want to fail. And there's a lot of other pieces to that puzzle. But, you know, as in, as myself, as somebody who likes to help people, and, you know, as, as a speaker and a, and a doctor, I want to give them whatever I can to hopefully stimulate them to wake them up. But if they don't wake up, I can't, I can't worry about it. Right. I'll just keep going for somebody yeah. might be ready. That person might be ready five years from now. That's right. You know, That's but right. today it may just may not be their day. You taught me that. You taught me that, you know, a long time ago. You're like, if they're not going to willing to put some effort into it, you got to let them go. Yeah. I do. No, I do. I let them go. Right. And they may come back. They might. But they only have to, they can only come back when they're ready. That's right. If they're not ready, then so be it. But and I'll be there for them when yeah. they're ready. Yeah, you'll be a better version of yourself anyway because right. you'll have more experience and you'll know how to handle more difficult situations because really what we're all dealing with is our emotional uh, behavioral uh, patterns and those patterns are hard to break. It didn't take long to create them. You created most of them before you were six and you've been creating them, you've been holding on to them your whole life. And if you're gonna make a change in life, I can tell you this, the one way that I've made a change in my life in the past year is I committed myself to change everything I possibly could that fast. 
Mike just said you built this deck. I built the deck. I did all the lawn. I did uh, you know pretty much all the landscaping. You can't see, but behind me is an in-law apartment I built for my mother-in-law. I built in a studio in downstairs. My practice is booming. I'm learning software. I'm out doing speaking engagements. I only have one life, and I only have a little bit of time in that life. And the one thing that you cannot give up is your time. Don't waste it. It's the most precious thing you will ever have. Today may be the last day of your life. You may die with millions in the bank. You may die bankrupt. Either way, it doesn't matter. You can't take a penny with you. But don't lose that time, that time spending with people. And if you believe that you can overcome stress and spend time with people and it'll save your life, you've got the mechanism to continue on for many, many years with lots and lots of lifetime. So I hope that gives you something to think about. That was a, that was a great great talk. Good. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that. it too. Yeah. So guys, every other Wednesday, hopefully, you know, sometimes we get things to do. We have, other, we're learning more things with our, uh, with our YouTube channels and growing. So every once in a while, you might not get a video, but I think every once in a blue moon, you might see us do a couple of other things. Sure. You know, like, uh, you know, going somewhere. Yeah, going on and do some outside yeah. video, having some fun, using our yeah. cameras, learning what to do. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just have fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because life should be fun. Right. I mean, this could be serious conversations, but at the end of the day, make it fun. Right. Yeah. So, guys, until the next video, ball the Donuts out. See you guys. <laughs>